and uh, just a I think a couple of items to go. So item number 12 now is the Regional Public Transport Plan, outcomes of consultation. So could we have the officers that are presenting that please? Okay, I'll go quickly, thank you. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you through a reminder of what the RPTP is, the process we went through, what Auckland has said in response to the draft plan, and then the changes that we've made and the next steps that come as a result of that. So in terms of the RPTP itself, it's our main plan for public transport, setting out how we're going to plan, design, deliver and operate the system over the coming years. The planned service changes which we've got um, ahead over that period, as well as the policy framework within which we operate the public transport system, and importantly, the contracting units for the various operators, which helps guide contracting discussions. It's prepared in response to the RLTP, which is where the funding is um, set, and it is something which um, we'll note in terms of future LTP funding discussions, that that's something underway which uh, could change the services as a result of those discussions. So we'll come to that in a second as well. For this RPTP, we started with a vision and goal, uh, which was um, endorsed by this committee, um, setting out what we wanted to achieve for public transport, which was a significant increase in patronage so that we can drive key outcomes which we're wanting to see associated with the five goal areas. We also set it out in terms of three specific time frames. So the short term was around the recovery. At the time that we released the draft, we were in the midst of the bus driver shortage, which was affecting reliability. The medium term focusing on service changes, which are enabled by new pieces of infrastructure like the Eastern Busway and CRL. And then in the long term, um, far higher patronage as a result of initiatives like the implementation of the full list of service improvements funded by the Climate Action Transport Targeted Rate. And uh, just an indication of what we're sort of aiming towards in terms of the time frame of this plan should we have the funding for those frequent services by 2031. So what Auckland has said about the plan, it was, uh, first off I'd say that we, we ran a really extensive engagement campaign. So there were three phases to the engagement and the third phase was this full on public consultation, um, trying to get as many people as possible. There was an awful lot of uh, outreach across all sorts of different media, um, which was uh, trying to do things in a bit of a different way using QR codes, which the community is now familiar with, um, and an ability to shape the answers that people wanted to give us based on the topics they were interested in. In total, we had just short of 3,200 um, pieces of individual feedback from uh, individuals and organisations. A lot more than what we received in the previous RPTP and a lot more than we'd ever received before. Overall, the feedback was do this plan but do it faster and do more of it. Um, and there was some good support for some uh, key aspects of the plan as well and good support for the various individual component parts, which I'll take you through in a moment. We've, we've produced a consultation summary report, which will be published soon, which will um, give in very significant detail the feedback that was um, generated from the public and responses to each individual element. But part of using that three-stage engagement process meant that when we came to do that final public consultation, uh, what we heard back from the public was largely uh, reinforcement of the draft that we had developed with those first two phases of engagement with key partners and stakeholders. Just some info on the responses. So we had a really good spread of ages across um, the responses. In terms of, and as we would expect, gender split, um, under-representation perhaps of people with accessible needs and the ethnicity groupings weren't necessarily reflective fully of um, ethnicity we see in Auckland. So Auckland overall is on the right and in the centre there is what we received. Part of that, what was interesting was we had an awful lot of people who just put other as their ethnicity. So we, we don't know um, how that 
what that means, but we also had a situation where an awful lot of people wouldn't give that information, just as only 50% of people even told us what local board they were in. Uh, in terms of the topics that we received, they're listed down there um, on the right, and you can see the level of um, feedback based on those topics. And as we can see, um, for each of the various topics, so the individual goals, the vision, and those key aspects, um, there was a high level of support, followed by a level of, it's the right track, but with some minor changes. And we averaged about 80% support for all of those elements. So in terms of the changes and response, there we go. Um, Gulf Harbour was the number one thing which was um, fed back on. It was about 40% of the overall feedback on the RPTP was on the Gulf Harbour ferry and the wider Whangaparoa Peninsula proposal. So, and, and the community was very strong that they do not support this proposal. So what we're doing um, in response to that is doing a independent study which will look at the transport needs of the peninsula from a public transport perspective and also looking at all modes and the decision and outcomes of that which will be engaged with the local community and incorporate their voices will be brought into the next version of the RPTP so there won't be any decision on the future of the Gulf Harbour ferry or the changes more broadly to the public transport system there. Um, as part of this RPTP. With the Northcote Port Fer Point Ferry, what we're going to be doing, um, again, there was opposition to the proposed removal of that stop. So there's going to instead be a recommendation to retain the service, promote it, and set out a sort of target of patronage that would need to be met in order to decide to keep it as opposed to make the trade-off decision to increase the frequency on the other stop. In terms of fare changes, there was a lot of support for this. Um, one, one, a proposal which we put out there to get a sense of was whether people supported the idea of a weekly cap, and there was a lot of support for that. Um, and there was very strong support from local boards for this as well. So the weekly cap, uh, sorry, the weekly fare cap, as well as looking at our transfer window that we have, is something that will be rolled into the next annual fare review and that team will be looking at what that looks like and how that could be taken ahead. Another key thing that we heard from the public was, why are you not hitting the TERP goals in terms of patronage? TERP has a goal of 550 million. So what we did as part of the work on the VKT reduction program, which I took the committee through in workshop yesterday, was to look at what would it take in order to achieve the difference, which is about 400 million boardings a year. I'll just provide you with updated figures, because unfortunately, right after I submitted these slides, the figures were updated by the team. So I just want to correct, in terms of um, the base capex, which it, uh, it says 4.6, it's actually 3 billion, not 4.6. And then the, the opex for the 400 million, it says uh, 7.5, but it actually should just say 1.6. So we discussed that yesterday. The difference is that the OPEX wouldn't really come into play in terms of increasing until around 2030, 2031 because of the lead time you need for the services. But there would be an awful lot required to get to that TERP goal and we want to be able to articulate that to people to uh, the feedback we heard from organisations and from people was please just tell us what it would take and I'm not going to go through them all but there are a number of them, very high frequencies, lots of bus lanes, um, more growth around rapid transit um, stations, and um, congestion charging as well. Just very quickly, some other changes which um, are, are being made to the RPTP in response to feedback or changes which have happened. We heard uh, specifically from Maori, their views in complement to the engagement we'd had earlier um, and have made changes to the Maori outcomes component of the plan. We've also updated the short term because we're now into 2024 once the plan is completed. And also we've just identified um, noting that the service list is subject to funding. So in terms of next steps, this RPTP 
set of revisions will be taken to the Auckland Transport Board this month for endorsement and then it will be released um, early December. The key thing to note, however, is that uh, we're not seeking approval from the board for the service improvement initiatives on the basis that that needs to be sorted out and resolved going forward through the forthcoming LTP process. So we're flagging that, that it won't be a, a guaranteed promise around those service changes and instead that will be confirmed in the next RPTP in 2025 following the completion of the LTP process. We're also going to be developing a monitoring framework to follow the progress of the RPTP going forward. So that's everything. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, open up to any uh, questions, Councillor Walker. So um, I've got a question and I'll zero in on Gulf Harbour. The submissions um, from the Gulf Harbour and the wider Whangapra community were substantive. They were very informed. You received a, a number of uh, intelligent submissions from operators, um, uh, from people communicating that a bus service is not a substitute. That was demonstrated in hundreds of um, submissions. So my, uh, uh, my question is, why is the Gulf Harbour ferry service being treated differently to every other service, you're kicking it out till 2025 in terms of a decision, yet you have all of the information you need, you've got the previous patronage figures, you've got escalating congestion that you're familiar with on the roading network because you monitor that, I'm assuming, on an ongoing basis. You've got an overwhelming consumer, customer preference for a service that has been a success. In respect of the RPTP and your chart, it ticks everything. As far as the TERP is concerned, it offers by far and away the greatest um, savings. It offers the greatest reduction in vehicle kilometres travelled for a service because it's the longest um, service. It ticks all the boxes. So against a background where you've got all of that information, plus information from operators who can offer an even faster service, 40 minutes down from 50, which would actually escalate the is attractiveness this a question, of the Chair, service. We've had yes, a this, is a, this is a question. I don't need to be interrupted by you, Mr Hills. I don't do it to you. So I am demonstrating, I am demonstrating, no, I don't. My dem I am demonstrating that you've got a body of information that's compelling. So how is it that, one, you need to do a study when you've got information you know, and secondly, that you're going to be reconsidering this in 2025. How is that? So there's a question. Thank you, Councillor. Look, I, I will cover this off because I, I, th I think it's important. So what was proposed has now been going, this is what we're going to do to support the community, understand the travel requirements of the peninsula and report it back. That will inform. There's another part to this too, though, and that's important to understand as well. So what we're trying to do is obviously give the ferry, get it back up, get it reliable, give it a chance to recover, give it a chance for the community to get back on board, to have reliable services, get the patronage up during that time frame before it is reviewed and in terms of any outcoming decision. It's also important to understand from the planner's perspective the introduction of Whangaparoa Station and you've got a high frequency bus travel there with a dedicated busway provides very big advantageous options to the community. So it hasn't been what I would call done in isolation where they haven't provided other alternatives. That's the existing busway. No, I'm, I'm, talk bus I'm talking about the future with Penlink in terms of. Existing busway. There's going to be bus lanes there in terms of that and an accommodation of such to tra faster travel times. Well, when it connects to the busway well, from there. Busway. Well, let's, 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 excuse me, let's not, I don't want to debate it. I understand yeah. no. your frustration with the ferry yeah. services. Yeah. I, the, the intention is to do the right thing here, yeah? That's what we're trying to do. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And just to clarify that, there's, there's no bus lane on the pen link, but it, it connects to the busway. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Councillor Walker. Any any other questions? Um, Councillor Turner and Councillor Dalton. Thank you. Mine was just an overall question. I, I see those pie charts there, and you say that there's overwhelming support for all this stuff, but actually um, those who... Um, had significant wanted significant change to your to your um, what you proposed, and those who wanted a little bit of change, they actually made up like sixty plus sixty five percent. When you you know you had, if you go back to the charts there, There you go, go back. No, no, we went too far. It was just the last one was good enough. If the last one's the most explan explanatory, just go and one other one and another one. That's it. You know, if I read that correctly, great minor changes and major changes, great is you know, in the minority by far. But, Councillor, what, what I'm saying is more than a third said great, love it, no change. Again, more than a third said, I love it, but I've got a suggestion. And then 25% said, I don't like this. So all I'm saying is that the red and the yellow are qualified. You know, it's, it, if you put those two together, then, then the, the green is in the minority. So all I'm saying is that it's, when I look at this information at a glance that you give me, I just look at that and I go, Okay, well, it can be read two ways, and it's not as supported as you say. Would would you disagree with that? Would you? Well, councillor, we've we've had people go through every single submission in an awful lot of detail and produce the report, and I look forward to everyone reading the report to be able to see the specific detail. But overall, the feedback back that we received, and from our communications people who were analysing this, and from my reading of it as well was that overall people were saying i like this i have some suggestions and often those suggestions were do it do more of this and do it faster there wasn't a lot of people saying i hate this i don't don't do it go away so Thank i you. think it's more accurate to suggest that um minor amendments are i like it but have an amendment as opposed to not liking it thank you Councillor Dolan. Thank you. <clears throat> I was just trying to, I'm trying to connect um, the information that we had at a workshop this week around what we need to do to reach some of our outcomes and then what you've found here. <clears throat> that need to wait for the LTP because our decisions on the LTP are obviously critical to all of us working. So. The information that you've gathered, maybe in terms of pro, um, projects, maybe in terms of strategy, I'm looking to how I can connect that to my LTP decisions. Uh, it's, yeah, good question. Um, I guess, Councillor, my what we've gathered through this um, really detailed analysis, and it's not just the, the 3,000 plus people in public consultation, but also the thousands of people we spoke to in advance of that, was we've got a good sense now and we can provide that, um, not just in the consultation report, but as needed for the LTP conversations about what people are valuing about public transport, what they like, what they want to see done differently. But we're seeing an awful lot of real, um, passion for the public transport system and how it really matters to people and they just want frequent reliable services that go faster and um, affordable fares and things like that so um, I think that should be very beneficial information in helping to de make decisions about trade-offs around budgeting. Thank you. Councillor Fury. Thanks um, this is potentially a bit of a stupid question um, I'm just trying to put together the last item and this item and how they might work together in the ferry space. So 
the um, resolutions for the last item were changed from endorsing some ferry work to noting it. Does that have an impact on um, how we can progress the ferry work through the RPTP, or are they unrelated? That's a good question. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, they're unrelated in terms of what's what's in the RPTP versus what we're doing for the now. Thank you. Yeah, yes, Councillor Chenna and Walker, two short questions, if you don't mind. Comment. My quick question is, we were told about how AT's um, um, success is actually bringing more debt. You know, so you said do it quicker, do it faster. But we've got all this stuff which we're subsidising, maybe not necessarily this. You know, we're do, talking about connecting it to the old uh, LTP. Just where do we sit there? You know, how much more money do we have to find to make this better? Um, I guess all I, all I can is I, I can't really speak to the the bigger pic uh, well the detail around budgeting but what's in the RPTP in terms of the service proposals which went out to the public is the same as the primary option which was provided to councillors for LTP consideration so what you're considering in that sense is aligned with the feedback you've received on this RPTP um, but I think, I think it's a perennial question if we look at the politics of it. My sole comment would be, yes, there, there's this endless view of I want this service and the disconnect between that and what it costs to run it and it's something that the politicians have to sort out. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, just a, a final question on behalf of uh, Councillor Fletcher. And a, basically goes to the point you're making there, Andrew, in terms of the, the, the RPTP process, which of course is engaged on with, with good faith and by the community and uh, is of pretty recent vintage if we talk about this year, just a few months back, and the desirability of, 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 of tying that in, as Councillor uh, Dalton referred to, of the of decisions coming up. So I guess, uh, um, and I don't know if, you know, I think there is a reference to it in the risk, is, is the risk where, you know, where there's a divergence from strong feedback, uh, you know, either um, collectively or, or in parts um, of such consultations and very important consultations as far as public transport goes. If I've interpreted your question correctly, Councillor, um, I think Actually, can I ask a clarif clarifying question? Are you talking about the decisions in terms of the funding of the services? I'm, I, I'm talking about um, the, the, out the outcomes of this, both in terms of reporting and then in terms of um, what emerges through the, the, uh, um, the LTP process. And I say that in particular for the feedback, either in general terms or, or in very specific terms, that, that is very strong and very representative. So there's, there's, there's feedback and then there's very strong messages that, that people that give to us. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, Stacey. I, I, I thought it might be helpful because I did answer a very similar question at the LTP workshop. Um, so where is Auckland Transport we, we go out or we commit to do something, we remain committed to doing that. The question before you though as councillors is whether you can continue to do all of the services or build all the things that um, you would like to do so. And so Auckland Transport does not want to step back from providing one of those services. But if you choose from a funding perspective that you're unable to do that, and then we would wait that instruction from you. So that might result in uh, not building something that was anticipated uh, or slowing it down. It might be a service that needs to stop um, or be reduced in level of service. But that is a funding decision. Our commitment remains to do the things that we have set out to do, and I've heard Stacey speak very strongly about that on Gulf Harbour. So we will, we've committed to the community and we've committed to this council that we'll 
continue to deliver that service and look to build it back up, but we will come back and look at it subject to funding and subject to any further RPTP consultations. So I don't think we can be any more explicit than that uh, to this committee. We, we will do what we say we're going to do, but you will make the decision shortly around what you're going to afford to fund. All right, on that note, thank you um, for the presentation. Um, uh, the recommendations are up there, which I'm happy to move. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Walker. So, so thank you, folk, if, if you drop back. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we just have one. Uh, yeah, so th thanks. We, we're just going to very, this won't be too long, hopefully, Dean, then you'll be back up. Um, so, Wayne, you want to say a couple of quick words? Well, I'll say a, quick, a few quick words. Um, so, for, for the folks around here that aren't familiar, an entire community mobilised, organised submissions. In fact, there are more submissions than are, are actually noted because the community made sure that it retained a copy of the um, submissions. And this was around overwhelming support for the reinstatement and the continuation of the Gulf Harbour Ferry Service. I would note so that you know, the Penlink route does not have a busway. It does not um, allow uh, the buses to go any faster. And the distance from Gulf Harbour to the proposed station, if it eventuates uh, at the um, start of Penlink, is 10 kilometres. So buses are going to be stuck in 10 kilometres of traffic that are progressively worsening all the time because there's more development out at Gulf Harbour. And they'll also be stuck on the Penlink route because it's only two lanes. That's what it amounts to. So you need to know that, and obviously Auckland Transport know that because they should be familiar with it. I'd also note that the submissions from the community were in-depth. They covered topics such as consumer behaviour, travel time, alternative um, ferries, new ferry provisions. There were submissions from operators, including the company that operates the fast electric ferry in Wellington that is state of the art. And those submissions proved to Auckland Transport what they were saying wasn't possible. And that is that an electric ferry to Gulf Harbour does work, that it turns around in more than sufficient time for charging with foiling technology faster than the current service. So there is compelling information that Auckland Transport has and the consequence is that it is very disappointing that this has been pushed out in terms of 2025. I do not doubt that the service will be reinstated but I say to you, other members here, other councillors, what's actually different to the Gulf Harbour situation than anywhere else that causes it to be reconsidered in 2025? So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Walker. Um, it, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Okay, carried. Thank you for that. Uh, we then uh, call clear up the Auckland Transport Quarter 1 performance report. I think Claire just uh, intro introduce it. Moved by Councillor Walker, seconded by... Councillor Turner, I think. By Councillor Turner. Over to you, Claire. Kia ora. Look, I look, know it's been a long day. This is the Q1 uh, report for Auckland Transport. All of the matters in here have been well canvassed over the last couple of months, so I'm happy to take the report as read, and Dean and I are here to answer any questions if needed. Thank you. Okay, so I'm um, a, a little different with the format this time. People, if there's any questions, we'll, we'll take them. Otherwise, we'll just go straight to uh, moving the item. Any questions from anyone? Okay, um, so it's... it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. Been here all day waiting. That's my resting <laughs> face, Councillor Turner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so moved, moved, moved in second. It looks like, Dean, if you last it to the end, you get away without too much cross-examination. So moved and seconded. All those in favour? Yeah. Against? Carried. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Um, the, the final item, Lata, isn't it? It's, it's just a pro forma uh, information memoranda. Um, moved. Moved by Walker, seconded by Turner. Any any questions, comments? All those in favour? Against? Carried. So thank you, folks, for your attendance today and your perseverance to the staff for your sterling work. And uh, enjoy your commute home, however that may be made. Thanks, John. Thank Thanks, Alf.